Hello and welcome to the Learn Podcast, where we dive deep into the timeless wisdom of the Bible and explore its significance in our lives. I'm your host, Mercy Kala, and today we're delving into the transformative message of James 1, 19-21. Joining me is special guest Ruth Patinu, author of Permission to Mourn. Welcome back. Thank you. I'd like to start off with a popular saying that goes along something like, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen more than we can speak. And it's very telling. And there's a truth to this because today's scripture verse speaks on this matter. This is such a relevant topic. I definitely struggle with anger. So these verses are very convicting. Who doesn't though, right? It's true. True. Do you happen to have the verse pulled up? Sure. It says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Yeah. Like you said, any human knows how quick we can get to be angry and to want to fester in that negative emotion because we feel that it's justified. But in the scripture verse, we're warned that we shouldn't be so familiar with this emotion. Yeah, that's true. I think with my personality, I find it really helpful to kind of understand um, how my personality works. And one of the tools to do that is the Enneagram, which I'm a uh, number one wing two. And we love structure and order and all things in place. And so the flip side to that personality is we can get really impatient and really angry and when things aren't going how we want them to go our natural response is anger so yeah this is definitely one of the areas that i struggle with the most now the most i know about these enneagram tests is that they're personality tests could you go into more detail about them yeah that's right they're different personality tests like um, a nine someone that's a nine they would struggle with decision making or something like that so you have the side that's really good that's kind of your strengths and then you have the side that's this is where you really struggle with so the flip side to being a one is you tend towards anger and frustration easily interesting yeah i have heard of it but i never took that personality test it's i know it's nice to find something that you relate to and these books these personality tests definitely help you come to terms with who you are and i know that they also tend to help you deal with the aspects of yourself that you don't necessarily like yeah there's just different tools that kind of help you see how has god wired me and different ones work well with different people but I think at the end of the day, we do have those things that make us a certain way and it has that positive side and then also that, that thing we struggle with. When this scripture verse, we're told that this emotion of anger doesn't actually bring the kind of life Jesus desires for us. Now, I understand that he's not telling us that we can exhibit this emotion, but it seems like we're being told to gauge when we can exhibit anger. Wouldn't you say so? There's that time that Jesus flipped over tables in the temple. I'm pretty sure there was some anger behind that, but it was a righteous anger. Yes. So God, you know, he created all our emotions and anger is one of those emotions. It's not necessarily a bad thing in itself, but is it being used towards righteousness? And are we being quick to just go there? Or are we really taking time? Like the verse says, even that, word anger the new king james translates it as wrath or the greek it's a violent passion so it's not that being angry is always necessarily a wrong response and i've heard it said that anger is kind of like a a dash on your car when one of those lights comes up it's like what do i need to check on why am i feeling this way so anger can be a good thing as in it alerts you that something's a bit off but then how you respond to that anger is really crucial Right, right. I like that. And moving on to the last verse, our reading here touches on moral filth, and what immediately came to mind was cussing. 
And the verse that stands out to me is the one that says, Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this shall not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? So basically cursing and being vulgar fits into this. And we're advised to get rid of it completely, even though it's so common these days in films and shows and music. That's a really good point. Yeah, What are you filling your mind with? Are you filling your mind with things that is going to, what's going to flow out from that? Yes, yes, that is so important. How would you say our viewers or listeners can tackle this, you know, dealing with the vulgarity that's out there nowadays, or even their temperament? What would you advise? It is an intentional thing. The verse says, get rid of or put aside these things. So that's an active choice. So the more you hang around that type of thing, the more it's going to affect you. So one solution to dealing with anger is choose to put those things aside. And instead, abide in Christ. Like the fruits of the Spirit, so much of it is abiding in Christ, filling yourself with the Word, meditating on the Word. When you feel those temptations, those are the things that help you respond in a right way. I like all those points. I also think that we should really go to God, you know? Instead of taking out our negative emotions on other people, I'll just like to add that you can just take it to God in prayer. That is definitely one way to go about it, you know? And what I like to state is that when I read this verse about fresh water and salt water not flowing from the same spring in my own life, I just remember I started looking at everything, the things that I was taking in through my ear gate, my eye gate, and I was shocked to have my eyes open and just hear how common like I said, it is these days. You'll just find vulgarity in so many different channels. And as a believer in this modern day and age, it may seem like it's hard to avoid it all, but it makes it so that you can now go out and seek for those people, those channels that are geared toward God and who wouldn't want to have you hear that. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, in summary, we really ought to treat our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. And to do that, I've realized we've got to use them the way God intended. It's basically saying, hey, those ears should be doing a lot more listening to the Word of God than the moral filth that they're currently taking in. And we've really got to consider the words that come out of our mouths. And I agree that we're made with a range of emotions, but let's not become overly familiar with the negative ones. What do you say, Ruth? Another point is anger is often a mask for sadness and hurt. That's where that anger can come from, unmet expectations. So sometimes when we're feeling that really intense anger, we need to kind of take a step back and look, are we responding in anger because we feel hurt by something and kind of see what's, what's behind the anger, what's going on behind this and not respond as society often tells you to step back and say, why am I feeling this? How has this person not met my expectations? How have I not met my own expectations so that I'm angry with myself? So anger has a lot of different levels to it. I completely agree with what you said there about not responding in a manner that society expects you to because as I keep reading the Bible, I realize that in situations where our emotions get heated, I realize that God calls us to exhibit peace. So I realized that the world has one way of tackling certain issues, but God's way is completely different. And it's really gonna transform your life to be more of who he wants you to be, not what the world expects you to be. So I really liked your point there. Yeah, that's so often we need to respond in the opposite of what the world is portraying or yeah, the example of the world we need to as Christians find our strength in Christ and respond in an opposite way. Exactly. For me personally, anger feels like my thorn in the flesh. It keeps me humble. It reminds me daily that I am in need of Christ and um, I'm a sinner. And yet I'm really comforted by Paul's words again from 2 Corinthians 12, 9, when he prayed for Christ to remove the thorn in his flesh. So no matter what your personality weakness is, it does keep you humble. It does remind you, all of us are sinners. Like First John 1 says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves on this earth. We're never going to be at that place of perfect. 
but it doesn't mean we sh should just give into that sin. We should lean into Christ, abide in him, and that's when those fruits of the Spirit can grow. You're right. We'd be lying if we said that we didn't exhibit it. And you know, anger is one of those things that people don't want to easily admit to. And there are those people who do come to terms with it and they go to classes for anger management, but not everyone finds it so easy to claim that this is something they struggle with. So it's one of those topics that feel maybe taboo. I don't know, but um, I like that the scripture verse didn't hold back and spoke up on it. It's not like a nice thing to talk about, but it's so necessary because we all struggle with it on different levels. Definitely, definitely. You know, this episode tackled so much about the theme here is the body, so it tackled a lot about the human body and how God actually entails us to use it. We talked about our emotions. We tackled how we should be using our mouths because <laughs> even that God demands something from us. I really hope that the takeaway from this episode is to really treat our bodies like the temple of the Holy Spirit it is and not to grieve the Holy Spirit by living a lifestyle that is... um grieving it, whether it's by speaking garrity or cussing or always lashing out in anger. And I think what's good is that God knows that we're human and that we do fall into sin of anger, but he's forgiving, but he still reminds us through scriptures like today that you still have it in you to be slow to anger, that he believes that you can do it, you know? So you should have faith in yourself too to do it. That is it for this episode, and until next time, check out Ruth Patini's latest novel, Permission to Mourn, which is online. It's a book written by various authors. You can also find my latest fictional book, Going Viral, available now on all evil platforms. If you like this episode, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. You can also find us on Instagram as Official Mercy Kala and Ruth Patinu. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.